Princess Rida of Jordan, thank you so much for being with us. You're the chairperson of the King Hussein Cancer Foundation. Um, at this summit at the moment in Qatar, representing your country and also here to talk with the 67 other countries present, how important is it for Jordan to be represented here in Doha? Uh, I'm thrilled to be here. I'm uh, th in Doha at the WISH um, Health Conference. I'm um, thrilled to represent Jordan. Uh, Jordan uh, plays a big role in healthcare in the Middle East and all over the world. Uh, particularly, I'm here to speak about the experience of the uh, King Hussein Cancer Foundation and center which has really become the medical jewel um, of the Arab world and it's the only comprehensive cancer center in the entire Middle East. It offers the most advanced cancer care to patients from all over the Arab world. Now earlier you were speaking about cancer as one of these large Western diseases sadly that's only increasing that many people have um, difficulty talking about there's a taboo surrounding what you called a death sentence that many believe perhaps wrongly that cancer brings with it um, how do you think uh, countries can help to change cut these cultural stereotypes how change ideas and mentalities surrounding diseases well the, f the first thing that one needs to do um, in one's approach of cancer and again this has been our experience is to uh, break the taboo that surrounds cancer. In developing countries, and even in some developed countries, it is still the case that cancer uh, is equated with a death sentence. And uh, you get cancer, you die. So very often the word cancer is not even pronounced. And we were extremely fortunate in Jordan to have a champion uh, who broke um, our taboos and it is His Late Majesty King Hussein who himself was struggling through cancer but uh, broke the taboos by openly speaking about his cancer by um, showing that there was no shame and no guilt associated with the disease and also showing that one could survive cancer if it is uh, detected early. So King Hussein um, was photographed uh, before the television screens all over the world as cancer was taking a huge toll on his uh, body but constantly saying you can beat it you can beat it and that played an enormous role in um, the fight against cancer and in light of this conference that uh, has to do with innovation this was the psychological innovation without which we could never move to the next step of establishing um, a great cancer center. And it's a very strong visual message, of course, being very visible with that kind of discourse. Um, speaking of non-communicable diseases, that is one challenge, of course, that all of us developed nations face. In Jordan in particular, do you face other particular health ch healthcare challenges in the, in the years to come? Uh, Jordan does face, um, um, yes, absolutely health challenges um, in, in the field of uh, uh, cardiology, in the field of um, diabetes, and in, in many fields, like, like any other countries. But we, we've all heard that by the year 2020, one in three people all over the world is going to have um, contracted cancer. Mm. So uh, it is for us it is extremely important to concentrate on cancer and to provide um, comprehensive support and this is what is so great about the King Hussein Cancer Center is that uh, we have established what is called multimodality clinics which treat the patient as a whole mm. and um, and when the patient presents himself for treatment you you are really seen by a whole host of doctors um, and uh, this it is very important in the world of cancer to, to do that. Uh, we have also established partnerships with the very best in cancer care in the world, such as MD Anderson and St. Jude and NIH. And um, we have adopted the, the state-of-the-art um, um, machines that obviously come straight to the, uh, have a direct impact Mm. On, on the patient. I, I also have to say that we're very proud that we are the first country in the developing world, the first center in the developing world to have achieved accreditation by JACO as a disease-specific 
cancer centre. Mm. And this brings me to my next point, Jordan being a bit of a, uh, an anomaly in the region where many basic health care resources are absent from, from some mm. neighbouring countries and there are a lot of difficulties. This is quite top flight technology and innovation we're talking about. Um, if we think about what's happening, for example, right now in Syria and of course the influx of refugees that you have coming into Jordan, how does that uh, present specific challenges mm. to, the, to the country? Uh, Jordan is being overwhelmed. Um, as I always say, we do live in a, in a tough neighborhood. And um, uh, of course, we have our, our Palestinian patients who come from the West Bank and Gaza. We had for a very long time and continue to have a huge influx of Iraqi cancer patients because the um, infrastructure for cancer care in Iraq has been completely leveled. Mm -hmm. And now, very sadly, we are completely and utterly overwhelmed by the influx of Syrian refugees who have absolutely nowhere to go for uh, cancer care. It is bad enough that they are refugees and mm. then they have cancer. So this has put an incredible strain on us uh, and, and presents a big challenge. There is nothing we can do about it because you cannot turn down cancer patients, but at the same time, our doctors are overstretched, our facilities are overwhelmed. Mm. And we hear a lot in the news about specifically the Zatari refugee camp in mm. Jordan. I should imagine that the, the first aid um, resources there are, are, as you say, overwhelmed and very stretched. What is available to refugees arriving there? The, re the refugee camps are being run by UNHCR and they, they do their very best to provide them with um, um, as much as possible with the health infrastructure uh, needed. But of course, uh, you know, the treatment of cancer is extremely specialized. You, you, you cannot just treat it in a makeshift facility. So um, it, it is very hard. There are, of course, mammography units, there are um, ultrasounds, but there isn't the entire structure that is needed to care for the cancer patients. So these refugees come to the King Hussein Cancer Center for treatment. And you have to realize there are many Syrian refugees also in the country that are not in the Zaatari camp, mm. uh, that, have, that, ha that have seeped all over Jordan. Jordan now has about one million yeah. Syrian refugees, half of them are in the cities and towns and come to the King Hussein Cancer Center. So we appeal to the international community and to the neighboring countries to offer uh, assistance to Jordan. Uh, I'm talking in terms of the health field, yeah. really, in order for us to be able to, to assist these refugees and in order for us to be able to, to continue standing as um, a solid cancer center. It's an amazing resource to have yeah. available there. Um, speaking, as you outlined slightly, the history of, of this influx, we're talking about Palestinians, Iraqis and Syrians, there must be um, a certain a higher incidence of people suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder um, in this region. We know that. Is that something that's, that's treated uh, extensively in Jordan? Uh, I don't know to what extent uh, stress traumatic, um, post-traumatic stress disorder is treated uh, in Jordan in terms of the refugees. I know that for those who come and seek cancer, we, in our comprehensive cancer center, we do, uh, we do have a unit that deals specifically with that. Um, but then these are cancer patients who also have post-traumatic stress disorder. I, I do not uh, know how, how, how much it exists within the camp area. But there's certainly a psychological element that where of, they're being followed. Oh, of course, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. There's a complete psychological element in the follow-up of their mm. disease. Mm. And just to, uh, to wrap up, um, there's something of a tradition, I think, of uh, visible and visibly active and engaged women. Um, I'm thinking of Queen Rania, Queen Noor. Um, is it a cultural, a cultural tradition in Jordan? Again, you know, I, I have spoken in, um, of um, His Late Majesty King Hussein, who was a, a role model and a champion for us in so many ways. Uh, I, I have spoken how he broke all the taboos related to cancer. He also always um, encouraged us to, um, to involve ourselves. Um, in, in the work arena, uh, to espouse a cause, to believe in it, to make a difference, all of it for the benefit um, of people. So um, he was uh, a big support um, and uh, didn't just encourage us but prodded us 
to involve ourselves, that, uh, that we were there for a reason, we hold that title for a reason, and, um, and you, can, you cannot just have um, all the good stuff without the responsibility of the position. Wow, it's a great sense of responsibility and accountability. And indeed. accountability, absolutely, and, and in order to acquire credibility. Super. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time. It's been wonderful to meet you. Thank you. It's great to meet you.